Incoming transmission. Hi folks, Irish Trekkie, back another Star Trek, the official Starships Collection issue view. This time we have issue 165. We have the Karema Starship, the cargo ship from the Delta Quadrant. Um, looking forward to getting my hands on this. Not the first cargo ship and um, that we've gotten, but an interesting design all the same. Um, before we dive in, I want to give a big shout out to Hero Collector for sending this over. It gives me the ability to do a review for you fine folks at home. And it's all down to your support that, support that I'm in this position to do these things as well. So a big shout out to all the viewers on the channel as well. Um, as always, my thoughts and opinions remain my own. But if you want to check out the model, there is a link in the description box, as well as the link to the fan pages and my social links as well for Discord, uh, Facebook, Instagram and uh, Twitter as well. So let's dive into reviewing this uh, cool model, shall we? So here we have issue 165. We have the Karema Starship Cargo um, vessel launched in the 24th century and a crew of 24. Interesting profile. <laughs> so we have our four sections. Karema Starship, designing the ship, uh, sink the Defiant, writing Starship down and um, on-screen appearances. So affiliated with the Dominion, those little pesky buggers. Um, and then you have some uh, close-up shots of the CG model here as well. Some nice, again, architecture on the ship. Um, so they were adept at transporting goods for trade, although they were poorly armed and unable to rely, uh, retaliate against attack. So again, they were really haulers, but not capable of uh, really much more than that. So uh, in the data feed, during the mission, Major Kira was uh, fasting to observe the Bajoran festival of Hamara, a celebration to mark the anniversary of the emissary's arrival on Bajor. And here we have an on-screen appearance of the cargo vessel itself. And again, some more on-screen shots. We have the Defiant. And again, you know, there was some good banter between uh, these characters and uh, Quark when it came to like uh, bartering. And you know, again, when the torpedo came in and the two guys were just like <laughs> a little bit kind of, oh, oh, what do we do? <laughs> um, but you know, it's, it's an interesting design, um, to be honest with you. It looks nicer in profile than kind of head on. Um, but you know, just a standard enough ship profile. Again, we don't have anything here on the L cars. But um, let's have a look at the concept art here. So again, we have another John E's design. Surprise, surprise, but no harm in that. Never a bad thing to have a John E's design. Um, so, it was created at the dawn of Star Trek's move into computer generated imagery. So, again, that's going to definitely give you a lot more options because of uh, the revenue impacts here of actually uh, putting them on screen. So, again, you have it reappearing in a variety of different roles. Uh, again, in Voyager a few times, Enterprise, and um, in D Space Nine in a few different variations as well. So again, reuse, reuse, and uh, you know, reduce workload. Um, so sync the Defiant. So again, we're gonna have a little bit of a rundown of Starship Down. Uh, writers David Mack and John J. Ordover, is it? Had the idea of a submarine story. No harm in that, like. A lot of good stuff. Like, one of my favorite movies out there is Hunt for Red October. Um, so yeah, you know, there was some good episodes and uh, this was one of them, um, pretty fun watch. And again, you know, having these like little tiny little stories inside uh, the, ma the main arc as well, kind of really added to an immersive experience and a fun distraction at times as well, because it got quite heavy. Um, so Starship Down was the first episode that the ship appeared in, but not the last. And uh, coming up soon, we have issue 166. We have the Temerian Deep Space Cruiser. For me, like a super kind of classic uh, alien ship design. So let's close out on the back graphic and uh, we go from there. Okay, let's have a look at this Delta Quadrant ship. Not exclusively Delta, well actually for this purpose of this review, it is. Um, but obviously we've seen this. Not even Delta, where am I going? Gamma Quadrant. 
I think I said Delta elsewhere in the review, maybe. I don't know. If I'm wrong, call me out. Uh, 3410 A slash A. Because it was in the Delta Quadrant as well for a period of time. <laughs> but for the purpose of this review, it's a Gamma Quadrant. Um, so aft mount, short enough or rise on this. So it'll be interesting to see that mounted. Uh, what is, there's a little bit, something has broken off here. We'll see if we can spot that. It looks very, very small, but um, I'm not sure what that would have been. So here we go. Here she be. One of the next cargo ships. Oh, I can see what it is. If you look here, so that, that should be an easy enough fix. Um, it's on my finger there. So just be conscious of that when you're taking it out of the packaging, that that doesn't happen to you. Um, so, paint depths are quite nice. Uh, windows are painted on. I don't see any, I see some slight molding on it, some slight drift, but not too bad. There you have your uh, cargo containers. Again, occupancy at the aft of it as well, kind of like the drive section, so to speak. Quite prominent nacelles. Nice geometry around here as well. And an interesting underslung unit, which is completely misaligned. Ooh, that, that's what probably happened in the box. Um, so just be conscious of that as well. I'm just looking here to see if there's any kind of damage. No. Kind of looks like a ship in itself, doesn't it? Die cast, plastic, obviously plastic. So just be conscious of that there, folks. Um, interesting detailing, very stark black. The nacelles are a little bit misaligned from what I can see. Like this one's quite angled up versus this one. And again, you have, you do have, there's some ships out in, in, in the Trek environment that have negative space in the nacelles. Looks all right. Interesting front feature here as well when you have that ventral kind of fin. Almost kind of looks like aquatic as well. Some nice paint, you know, purple trim to it. As Tekken, your windows are looking pretty okay. And then again, with this kind of block patterning, kind of gives you a little bit of sense of detail and stuff like that. And then you have the, the strong, different kind of, uh, I just don't know what color you'd call that. Um, it's almost kind of coppery, kind of central spine, you know, I'm, I'm assuming they're the cargo ones. We can uh, check that out anyway. But yeah, pretty nice. It's kind of almost like a, a cobra head, kind of like almost like a, 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 a an aggravated snake. Um, but yeah, let's see what she's like on the stand. And uh, we'll go from there. So here we have our lovely cargo vessel. The keen eyed out there may be looking to see if I have fixed it, and I did. <laughs> I fixed that little thing that fell off in the packaging, very easy fix, a little bit of glue, and um, it's done the job, it's done the job. Um, I like it more that it's on the stand. I don't know why, it's kind of weird, but um, it's got a very low sitting angle, and it hangs over. It looks a little bit more elegant, than it, and I really love that front, ventral feature um on, on the bow of the ship as well um yeah i was kind of i was mixed a little bit in handling it but um i think it actually looks much nicer on the stand it's kind of weird i don't know if that makes sense to you um but again i'm curious to know what you folks think of the ship itself as well um again as cargo vessels go it's got some of that dna Again, you want it to look like a cargo vessel, but the beauty with this design is it kind of does, but it's lent itself to being other types of ships in, you know, Voyager and so on. Um, so there's that to it too. So it's it's a, it's a lovely ship. And um, I think there's a good job uh, by Egomos here in crafting this model for us. So let's compare it to a ship in the line, just so we can get a sense of scale. Anytime I get to pull out a hero ship, it's a good day. So again, here we have the Defiant. Um, 
again a mainstay in the collection came out fairly early this is the one with the decal error on it where it's upside down still like it um but you can get a good sense of scale uh define sits quite high in comparison to the karema ship but that can be quite nice if you're displaying the two of them together i probably doubt if you are because there's probably other more substantial pairings up when you look at uh, star trek lore and d space nine um display configurations you know um but i think the two of them are quite good companion pieces now you could put the uh, the karema with some voyager ships and stuff like that as well you have that option because of the way uh, the ship was reused but again it's a decent ship it's a decent sized alien ship it's by far not the smallest out there but um it's not oversized as well it's within that kind of window uh, that you would expect alien ships to be so let's look to wrap up the video so there we have the Karema cargo ship. Um, yeah, I just want to say thanks for taking the time out of your day to stop by and check out the video. Uh, big thanks to Hero Clouder and a massive thanks to my Patreons uh, supporting the channel on a monthly basis. If you want to join that squad, the Patreon link is in the description box below. And if you enjoyed the video, you'll see all the other playlists for Star Trek, Discovery, Battlestar Galactica, Alien, and Sundry all down in the description box below. But again, Thanks for stopping by, checking out this video. Uh, more videos to come, and plenty more videos to come actually. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And um, as always, sound off in the comments below what you thought of the ship. And uh, again, as always, it's time for me to say goodbye. I've been your local Irish Trekkie, and I will see you in the next video. So take it easy, and goodbye.